Previously on Dice Paper Roll. Their freedom gained. The heroes fled down the street pell-mell, led to shelter by Ramekin and V amidst the clanging bells. Hidden safely in the bunker, the heroes discussed their plan. Should they first confront Lion or tackle Dent, his right-hand man? The plan. Infiltrate the citadel disguised as master chefs. Crafty. But if things went wrong, it might lead them to their deaths. With roguish charm and acting skill, they bluffed their way inside, and to the brooding lion upon his throne, served up their fare with pride. But lion was wary and hangry, drunkenly demanding food. When he uncovered Siegfried and Boy, it did naught to improve his mood. Meanwhile, Calatras bid the bard, Find those who saved the moon. The culprits must be hunted down. The tight four must meet their doom. Welcome back to Dice Paper Roll. This is book two, chapter 13. <gasps> Will it prove lucky or unlucky for the tight five? You know, I don't know. I don't bloody know. It's all yet to be unfurled in front of our fairy eyes and ears and yours also. Uh, we would like to acknowledge that this podcast is made on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation who never ceded sovereignty over it and we would like to strongly acknowledge that. Um, my name is Emil and I play Brackei the Goliath Barbarian. My name is Dan and I play Thundor, the human fighter and cleric of Tempus. My name is Ben, I play Snatch, the Alfling Rogue. My name's Greg, I'm playing Alan, A Aaron, Aeon, an Asimar Sorcerer of Helm. I am the dungeon master for today. And we're also joined by a special guest. Hello, it's me, Oliver. I'm back again for another play. That's right, um, Oliver Coleman joins us back again to play your character, Ramekin. That's correct. Half robot, half fish, rogue, intergalactic, uh, arms dealer and trader of the finest illegal delicacies uh, in the galaxy. Mm -mm. Tasty. Mm -hmm. Making me hungry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's his, um, is he a bit of a lover or a fighter, would you say? He's both in equal oh. quantities. What's his zodiac sign? Uh, he's a um, so where he's from does different zodiacs. Okay, uh, he's a uniform, uh, which is <laughs> like a unicorn, uh, but it's got an extra horn. Oh, uh, binocorn. Yeah, binocorn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, in a uniform of some sort. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. It's kind of got a, an extra horn where its tie would be. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're known to be uh, fastidious, uh, very tidy, self-disciplined, and uh, fantastic in the sack. <laughs> the egg sack. <laughs> True. I mean, as a half fish man, what's the reproductive kind of capabilities of, of Ramekin? Or does he have a robo dick, like um, with his with his? Uh, no, no. So he still has his genitalia sure. in, intact. So the species Just one half that he or? is, yeah, he wouldn't admit to that. Okay. But um, <laughs> yeah, just one half. He had a lot to begin with. No, the way they the way they give birth is that when they're kind of they just kind of lay their eggs into a river, and then the uh, female of the species will wander through the eggs that they've laid, uh, and they'll get fertilized that way. So they don't actually need to have intercourse is purely for pleasure, not for reproductive purposes. Reproduction is taken care of, just kind of very pragmatically, practically. Mm. Wow, I'm you learn learning something so every day. Much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It, it, what about is he, does he have a fine, hard time finding love in the in the in the fish community with you know his personal? Uh, uh, he does. He's uh, he's used the uh, the intergalactic um, fishy dating app Finder. Hey. Um, yeah, 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 there, there it is. Hello. Not plenty of fish, but <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Plenty of fish would have been the better one. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you only like fish. 
Yeah, he said, well, he, he, only, he likes fish and robots. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but um, he hasn't gone online yet for the robot love. <laughs> Well, um, we are brought to you as ever by our very generous and ultimately downright good-looking patrons, our Patreon subscribers. If you want to be a supporter of all things DPR, then you should jump on our Patreon website, www.patreon.com forward slash dice paper roll. Yep. A massive thank you to Alex Boak, Blade Douglas, Daniel King, Daniel B, Danny Carroll, Irene Cucci, Jasper Parker, Casper Morris, Leaf Burner, Lewis Potter, Liam Sterner, Arr, Matthew Undead Ban, Mika Wallace, Ryan Lewis, Sammy Duncan, Trent Dedham, and Trevor Goodchild. Thank you, everyone. You are total legends. If you'd like to add your name to that list, head over to the website that Emil mentioned. It's the best way to support us if you like what we do. Um, we've got big plans for down the track, some twitching and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so Some more touring, some more live showings. Yeah. More, yeah um, I'd like to get more touring in. Yeah. Mm. The more you can yeah. support, the better. I yeah. don't think we've got enough live tours coming up. <laughs> well, I, well, I'm also, well, we've got the plans to invest in the Mexican drug cartel as well. So uh, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, that, yeah that, that, that's a big, that's number one on the priority yeah. list. Oh, Boats yeah. are surprisingly expensive, right. particularly mm. ones that you can sail across the Pacific. Yeah. It's true. Mm. It's true. Yeah. Just strap it to some turtles, it'll be fine. Wow, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. This is, uh, <laughs> this is exciting. It's a unique opportunity. Now that you're in at the ground floor, you're an early developer, and uh, anyone who's in after you, you'll be able to profit massively from yeah. So, <laughs> in at the ground floor, welcome to be a mule. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big old multi level marketing, <laughs> network marketing <laughs> pyramid scheme. Okay. On that note. <laughs> Good luck segueing from that one. Segue. <laughs> I'll just fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> so we left the last chapter with uh, the Type 4 and Ramekin facing Lion, the tabaxi overlord of uh, Nightport, where you have been spending your time recently. You had entered the Citadel disguised as chefs and fed uh, Lion his favourite meal, a, uh, a Kiev um, when he had drunkenly stumbled into the catering cart, knocking out the hidden members of the group who had failed uh, their performance check to convince him that they were hidden performers. Um, I think people will find um, down the track that uh, an appreciation. I'll go back and listen to it and mm. they'll go, oh, that was ahead of its time. Mm. Yeah. Siegfried and Roy. They're going to be like, Dan, boy, boy. Dan, what a voice. Right. Oh, my God, it's just it, like an angel. Like butter. Uh, I hope never to live in that world. <laughs> like Pat butter. Parotti, Buble, Dan Last. Dan Last. Yeah. yeah, there it is. So Lion in his drug-addled stupor, um, his bloodshot eyes startle open, seeing you two spill out and, and perform your, your little musical number, um, and they, they narrow. And you're in this huge feasting chamber that makes up the centre of the Citadel. Two towers stand at either side of this long hall, um, and large iron-bound wooden doors lead into the base of each of the stone, black stone towers. The room is 40 to 50 feet, 40 or 50 feet high. <laughs> the room is 50 feet high uh, with a vaulted ceiling, long wooden beams spanning the space uh, and long tables fill the floor. A dais sits, a dais, dais, dais? Dais, isn't it? Dais, dais. 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 Yeah. Um, <laughs> a, a, a dais sits at the front uh, with a large uh, throne upon it where Lion has descended from. The sound of your voices echoes through this chamber and long bench seats line the tables. And at the end of each table, uh, a normal chair sits. And so you're in the centre of these uh, rows of long tables spanning off to the left and right, the throne in front of you and lion standing before you. And as he approaches you, he is taller than you expected when you saw him slumped in the um, in the throne. Eight foot tall, as tall as, as Brackeye and particularly large for a tabaxi. His once uh, well-muscled form has faded away slightly, but he still looks incredibly strong. And you can see the long veins running down his muscles underneath the, the mat of fur that covers him. And you can see in patches, the fur has, has worn away or, or fallen out. Um, and the veins underneath seem to have a green tinge running through them. Seeing uh, you 
trying to fool him, he roars in rage. The bellow of a big cat fills the chamber and echoes around, filling your ears and making your eyes squint. You think me a fool? He thinks me a fool to send you here. His muscles tense all around him and he slaps his belt. And as you watch, he slaps the belt and the the buckle in the center seems to have a contorted cat's face in it. And as he does, he begins to grow in size, becoming larger and larger until he towers above you 24 feet tall. Oh, that's not good. His legs growing, his paws gripping into the ground and his claws dragging scratch marks into the stone. Uh, he Does roars. he have Hulk pants? <laughs> he has very, very stretchy pants. Uh. No, all of, his, <laughs> all of his clothes rip off as he grows in size, except for the belt, which grows with him. Um, his huge cat body towering over you as he uh, reaches down to attack. This would be the first... Uh full room we ever played for, for a eh, Siegfried? <laughs> it sure has, boy. Um, uh, Thandor's going to try and do a cartwheel into a handstand. Okay. Uh, He's going to try and keep the, the, the entertainment going. Acrobatics check for me, please. Snatch, Thandor. snatch face palms. <laughs> <laughs> Shake his head. Acrobatics, you say? 17. Oh, uh. you f- you pull off a perfect backflip and, and uh, handstand at the end and then flip back onto your feet, which is pretty amazing in full uh, plate or in, in a breastplate. Mm. Um, and Lion growls at you. I'm still only paying one entry fee. <laughs> <laughs> Can everyone roll initiative for me? Oh. I'm going to stick with this guy. 11 for Brackeye. 11. 20 for Thandor. 22 for Snatch. Me too. Okay, I'm class and hit points. Brackeye. 14 and 100. Great. Thandor. AC 17, 70 hit points. Ramekin. 16 armor class, 94 hit points. Snatch. 17 armor class and 51 hit points. Gee, it's lucky we kept our armor on underneath this uh, chef's outfit, eh? <laughs> and Alan is 14 armor class and 50 hit points. And Lion is a lot more. Okay, so <laughs> um, as Lion grows in size, he smashes uh, one of the catering carts in rage, his paw uppercutting the cart and his long claws slashing into the steel of the cart, ripping it in half. And as it flies up into the air, splitting into two pieces, all of your weapons fly out into the air and land fortuitously into your hands. Hey! <laughs> the suckling pig still stuck to the end of Thandor's glaive and it hits the deck because he tries to grab it and it just whips back down. And he's like, ah, oh, and then he pulls it out of the pig. Super kill. Delicious. <laughs> the pig flies up and slaps against one of the rafters, precariously balancing over the beam. Ooh, I'm going to use that later. What about Andromeda's gun? Yep, it's in your hands. Oh, look at that. Ooh. How convenient. Loaded. Ooh. I wonder what's for dessert. <laughs> um, shall we have a little fight with Lion, do you think? Yeah, I didn't realise the Kiev was that bad. thought you were meant to be good at this, Ramekin. I mean, everyone's got their personal taste, don't they? Because Lion doesn't want any seconds. <laughs> Can I get a takeaway? <laughs> Can I get a take-home bag? You'll be the one going in there, doggy bag, Lion. <laughs> How dare you? I need a kitty bag! Um, Snatch. Uh, All right. Snatch rolls to behind one of the carts and takes a bit of cover, but he pops up his head and he he cranes his neck up at Lion and he says, Lord Lion, Lord Lion, I'm just a humble master chef here to feed you. Please, please, there is no need to take offence. We don't want this to go sour now, do we? We we, we just want to make sure you're all right. You uh, tumble behind the the cart and as you peep your head over you, you look out and... Straight ahead of you, you can see Lion's left knee. And as your eyes track up, you you, you make your excuses as you look up and follow the, the furry, muscular body all his the way... enormous junk. <laughs> past his enormous cat junk all the way up to his, his barred fangs, um, making your excuses. But you realise um, those bloodshot eyes uh, show no quarter. All right, well, I didn't want to do this, but... I'm going to have to test out this gun. I'm going to hold it up against me and put the stock against my shoulder and go, I, I, 
I think this is how they do it. Here goes. And pull the trigger. You awkwardly cradle the rifle in your shoulder um, a little bit high so that the butt just sits up high on your shoulder and the scope is right in front of your eye. Um, roll to hit. Disadvantage or anything? Because I've never used it before. Uh, yeah, disadvantage. Yeah. Damn, why did I suggest that? Because I got a 20. Uh, eight plus just dex for now. What? Proficiency uh, as well? Dex, just dex. Yeah, uh, so that is 12 to hit. Um, as you, you lift it up, uh, you squeeze the trigger and the rifle goes off in your hands, a powerful explosion and the crack of, of smoke and, and sparks, but the, the butt is not close enough into your shoulder and it skips upwards, um, the, the shot spinning wild and the, the scope smashing into your eye with the recoil. Uh, can ah! you... <laughs> You take five points of damage oh. from the scope and it gives you a big old shiner. Oh. Do I need an acrobatics check or anything? Like to No, it just push me back. it just knocks you back. You you're in a um, position behind the, the remaining cart, so yeah. you're okay. Ah, oh, that was a much more painful experience than I expected. Cunning action or uh, yeah, I'll take a cunning action to dash and take cover behind another cart. Uh, so there's or behind, behind one of the tables, maybe closer t- out of his range. Yeah, yeah, great. So you dash um, behind the tables on the left or the right of the fight? The left. left. Thandor. Thandor with his new glaive in hand, the blade sizzling with electricity. He holds it up and he goes, Hey, have you been dewormed? And runs between <laughs> his legs. And then, um, well, he's pretty fucking big, isn't he? So it's like 20 feet. So he has to... Oh, I really want to... You can fit between his legs. Yeah, Thandor's going to try and kick against his leg to step off and leap up higher and then shove the glaive straight up his anus. Okay. <laughs> that is a cold shot. That is, yeah, that is definitely a cold shot. Uh, go for it. Give us a give us a to hit. Oh, give us an acrobatics and then give us a to hit. Or athletics, actually. Athletics? Give us an athletics and then give us a to hit. 15? Okay, yeah, I'll give you that. All right, sick. Um, and then to hit is... Oh, I shouldn't have changed dice. Um, is a nine. Okay. Nine to hit. You uh, nimbly leap off his uh, bent knee at the front, stepping forward, but realising that you're actually travelling in front of him rather than uh, behind him. Uh, so you run forward and one foot on the knee, and as you go to manoeuvre the glaive up under him to strike at his uh, bottom, uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you're unable to get the right angle, and you leap up and the glaive, bends down in front of you so stuck between his legs and as you leap up you hover up in the air in front of him and see eye to eye with lion the the bloodshot eyes with veins of green running through Uh, hey kitty (laughs) he bellows in your face as you float in front of him an almighty roar which streams the remaining mutton chops and moustache on your face backwards. Your cheeks cheeks flapping in the saliva-filled air. Uh, Thandor, once he hits the ground again, is going to take one last attack and try and get him in, like, the Achilles or something like that, seeming that the uh, older thermometer didn't work. And that one didn't work either. It's an 11 to hit. You slash at his leg, hitting um, the the side of his knee, but it, the blade just bounces off his thick skin and fur. A ramekin. Well, being half fish, ramekin's pretty nervous around the feline species. Uh, <laughs> so he immediately engages his laser arm on his multi-tool arm, aims for Lion's mouth, hoping to shoot him squarely in the head and then just finish this business once and for all, hoping that this cat hasn't eaten the, the, the space quail, another one of this species' favourite uh, delicacies, uh, takes aim and fires. 
Okay, as you gaze up um, at Lion's open moor, the arm transforming in front of you, spinning and locking into place as the cannon emerges from where your hand was a moment ago. Um, you can see... You see a toaster go through. You see like a, a blender, blender. A blender. A whisk. Uh, a Swiss army knife. A trouser press. Come on, come on. It's never there when you want it. And then just a random rubber chicken for no reason. <laughs> yeah. Um, you see in the corner of a uh, lion's mouth what appears to be a feather. Um, and you, your cannon pops out and you fire at his face. You want uh, to like to roll to hit? 11. Um, so distracted by the, the feather in, in his mouth, your shot fires wide, the energy rippling down the, the cannon arm and firing off. And as it fires towards him, you see Lion has, it's almost like one of his eyes is following you and he just licks his lips a little bit as he sees you delicious standing there in front of him. And the laser fires up and he shifts his head just slightly to the right as the beam fires past him and scores into the roof above, cutting a hole directly through. And as you bring the beam down, a long slice into the wooden roof above. And you can see through the glimpse of stars on the other side. Whoa. Okay, so I'm thinking that Lion has potentially eaten the space quail. So I'm like, guys, guys. Be careful. We gotta, we gotta slice him open. He's got the space quail. We gotta slice him open and get the space quail out alive. It's yeah. not worth anything if it's dead. All right. It's probably better off to do that when he's not twenty-four feet tall and attacking us, right? Yeah, but just be careful, all right? Oh, Don't okay. decimate him. All right. I wonder if the space quail grew in kind of this in his stomach at the same size because oh. uh, that could be a very valuable space quail, giant space quail, even. You're damn right. Yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be worth a lot of big ones. Right. Um, so I'm going to do a cunning action and dive to take cover as well. Uh, y- yeah, you uh, dive and roll behind another table on the side opposite to Snatch, taking up a firing position. Um, make an acrobatics check for me. 20! Um, you dive and roll, hitting the bench seat out of the way and tipping the table in front of you as it falls down as a barricade and uh, you gain half cover from Lion as you set up in a perfect firing position. And I go, damn, he looks so cool when yeah, he does it, fucking hell when he does it that way. He's yeah. really cool. He's way better than you, Serge. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm very cool, guys. I'm very cool. You've got a lot to learn, Snatch. <laughs> Who said that? Alan. <laughs> oh, okay. Is Alan still standing on the side with his little waiter? He's still in the towel. middle, just a tea towel over his arm, just sort <laughs> of watching cool. everyone do stuff. Like, hmm, <laughs> should probably get on with something in a second. <laughs> Brackei. Brackei rolls his shoulder back and kind of does a bit of a stretch and then drops the great sword that he just caught from the flying cart and dashes towards the giant figure of Lion. As he's running, (laughs) and on his last sneeze, he transforms as he starts to rage into the shapeshifter, his werewolf character, his his claws elongate along his hands as his, as, as his limbs, in fact, lengthen and the fur sprouts down the back of his spine as his eyes take on a more wolf-like shape, as does his snout and his teeth just get real fucking sharp and brutal looking. Charging forward, leaping through the air, transforming into your hybrid werewolf form, you sail towards Lion um, and... This a moment where his eyes startle as he sees you flying towards him. Are you allowing the beast to take control or do you want to maintain some control whilst transforming? Brackeye's going to try and maintain some control given he knows he's blacked out in the past and he's uh, around friends and he would hate to break up the partnership of Siegfried and Boy before it really gets going. He feels like there's something in that. Yeah, great. Can you give me a wisdom save with advantage, please? Yeah, right on. That's pretty good. That is a 17. 
Great. Uh, you leap forward and you feel the rage filling your body as as your barbarian rage takes hold and the transformation cracks and bends your body into this new shape. And as it does, your, your will battles with the beast inside of you, but you are able to force it down through sheer concentration. And as you fly through the air, arms elongating, claws growing. Sweet tattoos. The sweet tattoos begin to glow and that moonlight shines from you again, illuminating this dark hall as you sail through the air. And at this point, everyone notices, which they hadn't seen before, a tattoo of uh, a newt on his left ankle. Oh, so oh. just a little bit of a uh, nice. little sidebar of information there. Just a little <laughs> tap it. Just a, newt. just a little taste from just your backstory. Can, yeah, you I can't know. believe I've never seen that, given that you wear thongs. Yeah, he's got lots of tattoos. It's just, you know. It all blends in together. As, you know, it's, it's like one of those sleeves. They look like one big picture, but if you look closely, it's like, oh, there's oh, that, oh, and there's no. that, and it's, you know, it's sure there's Pikachu. significance there. Yeah. Who would have thought you'd get a, you'd get a bloody uh, tennis racket tattooed on your navel? But he did. Wow. So much depth to work on. Man of many interests. Uh, well, you know. All right. I don't know about the tramp stamp, but, you know. I, I like it. <laughs> and Brackeye makes his attack. Who 19 plus, uh, that's 23 to hit. That is a hit. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, he's, he swipes his, uh, his, this is a multi-attack, so he swipes his claw, his right claw, into the belly of the cat as he makes a bite attack as well and his other claw joins the party. Yeah, so you first attack of three. Fly into the abdomen, ripping into him with claws and bite. Do you want to roll all my attacks and then roll damage? Yeah. Yeah. So that's one hit. 20! Yeah. Yeah. Two hits and one is uh, one is a... Uh, critical. Critical. Hello. Don't you get like a brutal critical? Oh, brutal critical. Yeah, you get brutal critical with Barbarian. That is an extra weapon dice for the crit. Yeah. Holy shit. So that means I roll three times the dice for that one attack, right? No, so, so you uh, so you would double the dice and then whatever the kind of weapon it is, the, the kind of dice that you're using for that, yeah. you then roll an extra one with it. So it's like if it's you roll a d6, you would roll for a critical two d6, but because you get the brutal, you get a third d6. So when I said you triple the dice, I was in fact correct. Completely correct, yeah. <laughs> Good, thanks. Thanks for the explanation though, Dad. <laughs> you can find that on Patreon. <laughs> Wait, yeah, so right. you triple the dice? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. And, uh, and, and, and not a natural, but a 20 uh, on the third. No, sorry, 21 on the third. Attack. Great. All hits. Fuck me. All right. First round of damage. Oh, that's pretty low. It's nine plus 17. 26 for the first. Uh, 10. 27. And for the final attack. It is, oh, it's low, um, uh, 6 plus 17, 23, and all up, oh, shit, 23 plus 26, so that's 49, plus 27, so that's 76, plus 10, 86, plus another 13, that is... Uh, 99 points of damage! Oh, oh. Jesus. Sorry, I just got to increase this hit point. Did somebody just say, huh. beast mode? Uh, you fly through the air, smashing into his abdomen and just rent it, like tearing chunks of flesh and uh, fur and skin away. Um, your claws and, and more ripping into his abdomen, trying to bury yourself, like dig your way in. And as you cling on to his stomach, you can see it's covered in lacerations and blood begins to flow freely down his chest and legs. Hurt. Wait, I just heard a squawk from in here. Space quail? It sounds like a space quail to me. Um, Alan holds out two hands pointing at Thandor and Brackeye, an invisible energy uh, distorting the air around him as it swirls around his hands and almost a wind picks up and flies across the room, surrounding Thandor and Brackeye and filling them with speed and haste. Uh, so speed is doubled. Um, plus two to AC, uh, and you get an extra attack action on your round, and you have advantage just on one attack. Saves. It's an extra attack action. Yeah, but it's only one attack. Okay, trust me. Yep, I'm 
I've looked into it. We, we, no we, worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, rules lawyer. Oh, it's good. Someone needs to actually follow the rules. Um, Alan um, then shuffles backwards uh, towards the, the doors out of reach of Lion, who bellows in pain and reaches his claws towards Brackeye. Not good, not good on that 20. Like, that's a 17 to hit, so it's a hit. Did you roll with advantage for that? I did for that's both, fine. yeah. Um, and then bite uh, 22, so that's a hit as well. Are these magical attacks by chance? Yeah, thought they might be. <laughs> <laughs> they are, 24. So his claws swing forward as you tear at his chest and very long claws spring from his paws as he grips you on either side and the the claws bury deep into your rib cage and abdomen and he lifts you off of his belly up towards his face and his maw opens and he bites you on either side of the head. The crushing force of his jaws straining on your skull. You take 64 points of damage. Oh! Is that halved or not? That's yeah, rage. Half. Oh, yeah, raged half. So 32. Yep. Um, and as he rips his jaw back, trying to pull your head from your body, the, the fangs slash down across your face, opening wounds on the side of your head and down oh. your cheeks. Oh. He lifts you above his head with one paw and throws you down towards oh. Thandor. Catch me, free! <laughs> Come here, boy! Uh, you fly into Thandor. Fly into Thandor's arms, I think. Um, and Thandor, you take 18 points of damage <laughs> oh. as the figure, uh, the werewolf figure of Brackeye slams into you. Can you both make dexterity saves for me, please? Dexterity save. Ten. One, one, one. one. You are both knocked from your feet into a prone position and he bellows blood running down his chest and face from the um from your from Brackeye's face. Thandor holds uh Wolf Brackeye in his hands and is like, You okay boy? You a good boy? <sighs> okay, okay, get up, get up, get up, get up. Snatch, you see uh, Brackeye fly across the room into Thandor, knocking them both prone, and this towering figure turns its glare to the three remaining standing combatants. Oh, so he's looking at me now? He's looking around the room, yep. Uh, so Snatch has ducked down a little bit behind the table. He was hiding behind for cover, and he feels his eye puffing up from where the scope hit it, and he shouts out to Ramekin, How long does it take to reload one of these things? Ramekin? Just, just use the button on the side. Is there, is there a button? Yep. Can I, all right. It so, says reload. Next yeah, to it says reload. <laughs> <laughs> there's some, um, there's some it's masking flashing. tape. Yeah, <laughs> with it, with it's uh, written on in a nico. Just reload here. Little arrow pointing. All right. And then so, so <laughs> he looks down. He goes, no, oh, oh, I can't believe I didn't see that before. And he presses the reload button. As you press the reload button, there's a click from the weapon and an empty shell pops out the side, flying through the air. Um, and you see the, the short cartridge of three bullets below load another into the breach. And I go, whoa, that is cool. And then I go, a, a, an idea comes into Snatch's head and he is torn between deciding whether to stay behind the table and shoot or whether to run for it and try and duck underneath lion's legs and run up his tail and he says all right all right and he feels that in his pocket the coin that he found underneath grey mead and he remembers tamora and he's like oh tamora help me decide help me decide and he pulls it out and he says tamora's head i run up the tail and bashiba i stay right here it's heads hey Hey, so snatch bolts around the side of the table and he tries to roll in between old mate's legs and then try to like run up his tail to get a little as close as he can and then so he can't possibly miss just point blank into us uh, give me an acrobatics check don't forget that plus four now baby oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh I need it because <laughs> it was a two uh, so that is 
14 plus 4 is 18 for the acrobatics. Um, you run forward, um, heading between lion's legs, leaping over the collapsed form of Brackeye and Thandor. And as you run through... Um, I say, Master Chef coming through. Watch out, boys. Your foot... Service. <laughs> <laughs> your foot slips in a bit of uh, leaked garlic uh, a butter from the Kiev. I go skidding like You go surfing. skidding behind, but you grab onto the lashing tail behind Lion and and using that momentum, swing up. You don't get quite as high as you wanted to, but you sort of swing out at a right angle. Your rifle held out uh, in your other arm, pointed directly at Lion's left butt cheek. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Anyone order rump for dinner, boys? Oh, sick bird. Yeah, thanks, Lando. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have mine rare. Uh, that is a 13 to hit plus the four still from yep. that coin, so 17 to hit. Um, you swing out on the tail um, and the rifle is just so close that it detonates directly into the left butt cheek of Lion, <laughs> scoring a scorching hit into his, into his bottom. All right, what am I rolling for damage there? Oh, what are you rolling for damage there? Lion's left butt. Just roll me a d20 for now. Oh, fuck. It's it's bird, sweet. bird. Just working on new material for the great and Roy. <laughs> Seven points of damage. So the, the rifle goes off, but you're not able to fully control it in your one hand, um, and it the recoil lifts the rifle up into the air. The bullet buries into Lion's butt cheek, and a small tendril of smoke floats out behind it, um, but you are blasted back. Uh, can you give me a strength check to, to hold on to the tail? Oh, I rolled a one, but Tamora's luck smiles upon him. Oh, that's oh. better. 18 plus four, 22. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so you hold on to the tail as the recall of the rifle blasts you away from his butt and you swing around the side of the body um, floating over the tables. Yeah, and then I'm going to use my cunning action to let go and hide from him. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Give Flying me. through the air. Sha, 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 sha. <laughs> I was Six never here. Boy. Yeah. Um, you let go of the, the tail. Give me an acrobatics and a stealth, please. Acrobatics uh, with the plus four from the coin as well is 26. Shit. And the hide check with stealth is 32. Wow. wow. Yeah. Um, he learns fast. That was fucking cool. That yeah. was super cool. <laughs> you... Uh, let go of the tail while you're at Lion's side, so outside of his peripheral vision, um, and you use that momentum to swing yourself out, leap backwards, flipping over and landing on one of the bench seats, sliding perfectly backwards on the bench seat <laughs> till you're just at the end of the table where you land in a position where the rifle is resting on the end of the table, pointing up at Lion. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> World after world flashes across the dome, and in each one, you and Calatras step through, threatening or bribing your contacts in each world to seek out the fallen meteors of power. Each of the agents that you meet, you warn to look out for the Type 4. So, the portal before Ariki's is flaming in like a crescent shape. No, what do you call that? Like a ring? Yeah, like a ring. <laughs> a circle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that technical term. Um, yeah, so like... A hemicircle? She, yeah, a hemicircle. <laughs> a hemicircle. <laughs> um, and at the edges of the portal, like snow blows into hell and melts immediately. And then like some like janitor comes by and like starts like mopping it up. Um, and <laughs> she walks through stepping into the snow and like it's on the ridge of this giant mountain and in the distance there's like what appears to be a building that is the shape of a head and as she walks along you can see Ariki's is wearing the skin of a, a panther and she walks along the ridge of this mountain and then the next moment she's standing in the throne room as like yeti people are held against the walls by some unknown power and some are like floating in the air just frozen although 
not unable to control themselves within that space. And either side of the hall, there's these big uh, windows. They're like windows. <laughs> and light streams in. And at the end of the hallway, there's a throne made entirely of mammoth bones. And a yeti sits, like a big yeti with like some kind of helmet on. What do you want of me, my queen? The way I see it, <laughs> I see it. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> uh, uh, the way I see it is that oh, wait, I just you have it. a choice. I just it. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a choice, don't you? There are two ways we can go about this. You tell me the answers that I require, or you don't. What's it going to be? I'll do anything to help my people. Indeed, I bet you would. There's a group of four people. Well, things, I guess. Different kinds of beings. A man as large as a mountain made of rocks with green lichen, I guess, flowing from his head. A small creature, a wee man with hairy feet. Uh, who else is there? Let me think. <laughs> I believe there's a very handsome one that's of red of beard and a human. <laughs> he is oh. with plate mail, I think. Oh, very, you know uh, of him. You can't forget that face. Calatras is standing behind you holding up a picture of the time <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> These ones, um, damn it, these ones. Find these ones. <laughs> and the other thing, Ariki, he nudges you. Hey, uh, them. Uh, why didn't you give me the picture earlier? I, I forgot I had it. It, it would have been very these helpful. And she hands the Yeti a flyer. Well, she doesn't hand it. She she puts her hand forward and the sheet of vellum flows up into the air and travels across the room and lands, unfortunately, in the Yeti's face, just like, just sort of straight in its face. Sorry, I'm not quite used to these powers yet. Fidelity's an issue. Uh, so watch out for these guys. But we're also looking for a meteor. It's called the Fallen Meteor. Is that is that the best name we could... Well, some people call it Tia as well. It's oh. the largest, most powerful meteor. You will find it for us or your people will die. Aye, what he said. So you've got an option... Thandor, you have the hulking form of Brackeye on top of you. Thandor, in his hasted out state, is just like, get up, boy, and just like forces Brackeye off of him and try and like stand us both up at the same time. Roll <laughs> a strength check for me, please. That is a 19. Oh, excellent. You basically kick flip up, holding Brackeye, pushing you both um, into a standing position. Um, and <laughs> you're so juiced from the haste, it doesn't even use any of your movement. You just uh, smash up into the standing position as if you as if you <laughs> as if you were on like a lift. You yeah, just yeah, don't yeah. even like just bend like, your knees, you just stand up. Th Thandor slams his like gauntlets into the ground, even though Brackeye's on his chest and just does like the whole kind of like stands up, just like straight away, just doosh and goes Aah! and then just starts running into a lion and starts just hacking away at him so as you smash those uh, your gauntlets into the ground the glaive is lying beside you and the reverberations through the wooden floor lift the glaive <laughs> up into float it up into the air next to you as you set up you just snatch it out and charge forward some serious core strength. <laughs> serious. <laughs> serious core strength. I've been doing sit-ups, motherfucker. Um, first attack against Lion is a 10 to hit. No good. Is going to have a second attack is a 7. Ooh. No good. You're done with dice. <laughs> Third with the haste is a 12 to hit. And then he goes, you know what? Fuck it. 
action surge and goes to Brackeye. Sick him, boy! <laughs> <laughs> commanding strike. You charge in and, and hack at Lion's knee, his left knee, but your glaive is unable to penetrate the thick fur and, and muscle. Um, and using your last action, you give Brackei a surge of extra, um, extra speed. That gives me an extra attack outside of the round structure, right? Yes. Okay. But you're not next to Lion, so can he use it? Oh, he's not next to Lion. We'll save it and use it on his turn. Ramekin. Uh, Ramekin, still perfectly poised from his amazing display of acrobatics earlier. And slightly impressed with what he saw Snatch just do. Of yeah, course. very impressed with what he saw Snatch do, very <laughs> impressed with what he saw Thandor do. He's like, these guys are really getting it together, you know. I thought we were lost, but uh, these guys are pretty good. But uh, I'm going to show them how it's really done. <laughs> and his uh, laser arm, still pointed at Lion like it was before, he points it up to his head again ready for another shot takes aim hoping to finish him off Byers says cop that furball the energy ripples up the arm as another beam fires out from behind the upturned table 14 the beam flies wide again lion shifting his stance um, and turning slightly towards you as the beam fires past smashing into the wall behind and boring a hole through the stone behind you. I'm looking like a dweeb bag. You're not the only one, don't worry, buddy. You've got this. Frustrated by your missed shots, you're able to take a, a second attack. Okay, so Ramekin, able to take a second attack, takes aim again, seeing that Lion is staring him down. Takes another shot. Come on, Ramekin. Oh, not bad. 22. Yay! Oh, yes, that is definitely a hit. The beam flies straight and true. We're shooting for his face again. We are shooting for his face again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Where else? So, so we hit that space quail. Yeah, no, roll exactly. a d20 for damage. 10. The beam flies forward and scorches a line along Lion's cheek, cutting into his white mane that floats around his head. And you can see the burnt graze across his cheekbone, um, leaving a sizzling mark. Oh, smelly. I hate burnt hair smell. Yuck. Yeah, the stink of burnt <laughs> hair spills the chamber, yeah, covering, covering the delicious garlicky smell of the Kiev. It's a pity. Brachai, um, you're filled with energy from the haste and from Thandor's commanding strike. Seeing Thandor hacking at the left knee, um, he notices that Lion is focused on the laser strike that just seared his cheek hair off. And so Brackeye attempts to take advantage of that by dashing underneath his legs and trying to hamstring this cat. Great. Go for a hit. You charge forwards. So with the haste, I get an extra attack. So that means I get four attacks. And then a fifth and one a fifth with Vandals. Yeah, I figured we'd strike. work that in a bit after my move. Just roll all five and then we'll... All right. Um, that is 15 on the first attack. Uh, that's a miss. Ooh. That is 21 on the second. That is a hit. Uh, that is 22. That's a hit. Uh, 12 miss. That's a miss. That's four. And uh, 19. That's a hit. Three attacks. 31. 28. Plus 21. 80 points of damage on the hamstring. You slide uh, between Lion's legs, slashing at his uh, knees and, and turning around, um, ripping into the, the back of his legs. In between claw attacks and bite attacks, Brackeye looks over at Thandor is like, I mean, I hate to, you know, racially profile, but this is the second tabaxi we've encountered and also the second tabaxi is an absolute piece of shit. I couldn't agree more. Not all tabaxi, but definitely this one and the last one we met. Not all tabaxi. Hashtag not all tabaxi. <laughs> uh, you hack into the, the back of Lion's leg and he lets out an almighty roar which shakes the room. It reverberates around, rattling each of your ears. Can you make a constitution save for me, please? All of us? Everybody. Oh, no. Eight for Black Eye. Oh, no, 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 oh, no. 17 for Thandor. 
21 for Ramekin. 15 for Snatch. But if this is against being frightened, I get an advantage. It's not. Um, so uh, everybody but Ramekin, um, you go to clap your hands over your ears, but the sound reverberates and you're not quick enough. Only Ramekin, your cyborg ear slaps shut a metal flap, yes. which saves your your android half um, as the, the sound reverberates and all of your eardrums pop huh. um, and blood runs down the sides of your heads. You are deafened. It joins the stream of blood that was running down Brackeye's head already. Yeah, and you all take 20 points of damage. Oh, boy. <laughs> Auditory damage. That sounds like we're going to get some tinnitus. Um, as the roar echoes through the chamber and, and your ears pop, your, your, your eardrums bursting, the roar seems to continue on in your heads. And as it does behind Lion, you're all looking up at him and behind him, the roof explodes. The wooden beams shattering, the roof tiles and plates falling in towards you in an almighty explosion. Fire and wood rain down all around you. Can everyone make a dexterity save for me? And the pig carcass. <laughs> yeah, and the... Which fortuitously falls into the mouth of the tabaxi and chokes him and he dies. Kiev going everywhere. <laughs> 13 for Thandor. So anything over a 12. 16 oh. for Rekai. 8 for Ramekin. Snatch rolled a 1, uh, but Timor is on his side and he ends up with a 17. Uh, dodges out of the way just at the last minute. Great. So everybody but Ramekin is able to dodge the falling debris. Ramekin, so pleased with the fact that you weren't deafened. You're like, so <laughs> this is why I don't clean my ears, guys. What are you doing? <laughs> As you say this, a huge beam falls down and smashes into your uh, oh! sidewalk side, doing 15 points of damage. Make your fish eye bulge out just a little bit. <laughs> With a wet squelching sound, the flaming beam collapses to the ground. You uh, look up past Lion. Um, everyone, you notice that Lion seems uh, a little startled by the sound, uh, a little pleased with himself that he managed to explode the roof. But as you look past him, you can see floating through the night sky the figure of the Dent Nort, the huge flying ship that Dent commands. Uh, the side of the ship obscured in smoke as it's detonated a broadside and smashed in um, the roof all around you. You can see next to it uh, another smaller ship more familiar to you that you had seen when you first arrived in this place. The ship that Andre had captained to, to capture the tier. Behind these two, you can see a rickety old steel trawler ship which seems to float awkwardly through the air, turning ever so slowly to point its bow at the citadel that you stand in. Behind it, the night sky stretches out, limitless stars um, with an almost um, imperceivable depth. And the asteroid belt that stretches around the planet in a ring, glistening in the sunlight that shines out around the dark moon to your right. The planet, a blue-green marble, fills your vision to the left. The trails of smoke and ash and cloud finally beginning to recede from the continent. And you can see the glistening blue of the seas as streaks of cloud seem to blow backwards in a, in a harsh wind. You see figures scrambling on the dent nort to reload the cannons on the side that fired down on you. Um, and as you do, the second ship, Andre's ship, swings close to the tallest tower, grappling hooks and ropes flying out and gaining purchase on the top of the tower as figures begin to rappel down towards the top. The ground shakes slightly beneath you as the left tower begins to slightly crumble, opening up a gap where the door was into the, um, the left tower, the shorter tower, revealing a staircase leading down into the depths of the citadel. Um, Lion looks up in surprise and growls in frustration as he turns and leaps away from you onto the side of the tallest tower. His long talons digging easily into the stone as he clambers up with an amazing speed. Okay, can everyone make a perception check for me, please? 20! 20! Oh, 20! Oh, 20! 
must be a rogue thing. <laughs> 16 for Thandor. 21 total for Brackeye. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe we'll be like that. 33 for me. Might just be getting the hang of this old dude dish to come. <laughs> Uh, so a distant cry from the dent nought floating above you echoes down to all of your ears. You hear the cry of reload, um, and as you do, a second more faint sound, uh, muffled sound echoes up from the staircase leading down to your left, a muffled cry of help. Help. Help me. Help. Do I recognise the voice? No. Uh, On a 33? A 33. Yeah, critical success. Uh, yeah, look, it sounds remarkably like Andromeda's voice coming from the, the staircase leading down into the dungeon of the Citadel. And on that note, we will end this chapter. Thus brings to a close chapter 13 of book two of Dice, Paper, Roll. Will the tight four and their good friend Ramekin, the half-fish, half-android, be able to rescue Andromeda from the clutches of Lion? Will Lion and Dent fight each other and take each other out nicely and conveniently? Will they find the tear that's powering the, the shield of the entire world? Who knows? Find out in a fortnight. Uh, we'll be back then. Um, that's Dice Paper Roll. And the tight five out. 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 Hey, welcome. Welcome, welcome to Dice Section. Loose Hammer of the Tide 5. Third game of D&D, &D, Ollie. How'd you go? Third Good. Epi third episode. Uh, third episode. Uh, I mean, third episode and third game. Third ever game. Uh, that one was good fun. That, at the end there, oh boy, I was on the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you really grasped the combat rules really well. Like, um, there was a couple of times where you'd made calls about what you were doing. And, um, yeah, you, you've picked up the game. Like really, really quickly. Mm. Oh, yeah, cool! Thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'm thinking it's like having a, a like a, a weapon with range where it's like shoot. It's like oh, sometimes it's, it feels a bit limiting because it's mm. like why would I put myself in danger? But then it's also always like oh, it'd be fun to have something else. So I could run and do some acrobatics and jump and stab this cat. You've, you've got the knife. I do have the knife, but you? it doesn't do as much damage. So I'm yeah. like, I guess for the team, I'll be less cool. But, but don't but forget no. sneak attack. Oh, no, it does, but, it but, does the same damage. I, the thing on the sheet, I, remember we said ignore that. So you roll the d20 for the, the blender fucking attachment oh. on your arm as well. So sorry. So I haven't but, quite grasped the rules of combat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's homebrew. So yeah, it is yeah. homebrew. And that's that's my bad for not explaining that more. But, but so. also, like, I mean, what you did at the start with, like, you took aim and you fired and then you dove off and tried yeah. to use your, you used your cunning action to hide and then you flipped the table up and all that kind of stuff, like... I get like, yeah, yeah, sometimes it can seem, but com like melee combat can seem a bit limiting as well mm. at times because you're just like always like I run in and I hit it with my glaive, you know, like, I mean, I've got a couple of other things that I can do, which I always forget to use, which would be helpful because one of them gives me advantage and I didn't do it once. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, I mean, mm. I, I get it. Like sometimes yeah. it can seem like you can get into a bit of a, a rhythm, a rhythm yeah. and a cyclical thing where it's like, okay, what do you want to do? <laughs> oh, I want to shoot at it. Like, and that's, but yeah, it's about, yeah, I guess, you know, you diving behind shit and getting a great purchase, that mm. is where the flavour and yeah. that kind of thing can come into it. The sweet verbal barbs as well, that's not for Yeah, you. exactly, yeah. the one-liners, yeah. like, and that was I great. And I think, like we, forgot, like, we forgot you had advantage, uh, you would have had advantage on your second shot, I think, because Thandor was in there, which meant you would have got sneak uh, attack. Okay, right, right. Do they, don't they need to be flanked before you get sneak attack? Not no, just you just need you just need to have engaged. one one ally that doesn't have disadvantage opposed on them, or that is not as long as they're conscious and they're attacking that person. Yeah, then right. the rogue gets sneak I thought attack. It had to be flanked. Yeah, from but a, no. From and also on that note, 
Thandor didn't really do much. So you could also get away with like, oh, he's just a little fucking like, he's yeah. not even doing yeah. anything. But it wasn't really nothing. distracting Lion at all either. No. He's just hacking at his knee and he's 24. And I was missing every Ollie, fucking time. So Ollie, you know. Ollie also has sharpshooter, which gives him sneak attack to his brain shots. So. Oh, does mm-hmm. it? Yep. I guess Brackeye with a disadvantage on those reckless attacks wouldn't count for that, hey? Like you said, no. it has to be a. Re- didn't you say it has uh, to be a character without without yeah. disadvantage? Yeah. yeah, right. So you don't get disadvantage though. I just get advantage against you. And you oh, that's true. Against- that's yeah, true. Yeah, so yeah. It would, work. Yeah. It would yeah. still work because you have advantage against him. And we know the rules. Yeah, we're, we're who great. cares? So, so sharpshooter, do you always get advantage on your ranged attacks, or do you always just get sneak attack? I think it allows you to. It, it probably allows you to apply sneak attack if you have advantage. Yeah. See, this is why I always play a spellcaster because you get these neat little cards where you just read off what yeah. happens and you get a selection of all these cool things you get to do. Yeah, for sure. You mean yep. you don't have to flip through the book like I'm doing now? Um, I do sometimes just for show. Obviously, I'm not reading the rules. I'm too busy cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Only for promotional shots do yeah. you flip through the pages of the Dan yeah. rule book. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Sharpshooter, attacking at long range doesn't impose disadvantage on your ranged weapon attack rolls. Yeah, uh, right. So that means then as long as he doesn't have disadvantage and if he gets advantage, if an ally is there, then he has sneak attack. <laughs> so um, the laser cannon has a 500-foot range, so I think oh. that's over anything over 500 feet. So you could... Oh, you could take shit down from, like, well, ships Well, I could take out away. these ships, yeah. yeah you could... Yeah, you could fire at the ships or down at the planet or whatever you um, wanted with that laser cannon. Damn. It's a it's a beast of a weapon. I think it's a uh, bit further, 500 feet to the planet. It is a little bit further, but you bit. only get disadvantage, right? And it's so a, yeah, it's a, a bit. The beam would just keep on going eventually. It's, right? it's a big planet. It what's the armor class, man? Yeah. <laughs> it's, well, it's, pretty, it's pretty low. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's its hit points, though? Uh, it's yeah. a good point. Yeah. It's a good point. Um, speaking of which, uh, see ya. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Catch me, Siegfried. <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs>